So this is what we're building in this tutorial. It's a cool retro 80s cassette. And if you're young, you probably don't know what this is, but I can tell you that, that this is a device that you can record music on. And it was very, very cool. And I actually miss it a lot. This is all made by CSS. So we're not gonna design anything. It's just CSS code. This CSS code may be a little bit uh, unoptimized because I haven't gone through it that much. I just throw this one together because I wanted to show you how to create this cassette. So there may be room for optimization if you want to do that. And of course, as always, there's probably a thousand ways or more of doing this. So this is just one way of doing it, but it's only CSS and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm gonna start by setting up a parcel server that I can use so that I have this nice server that will update automatically when I save the files. So I'm gonna to go to my terminal and then first I'm gonna type npm init dash y so that we create a package JSON file. And then I'm gonna npm i, I'm gonna install parcel. So npm i parcel dash bundler and I wait for it. All right, that's parcel. I'm gonna open up my code editor And as you can see, we have some files here now. We have the package.json and the, the usual lock file. And we also have our node modules folder. So we're gonna create a new file that's called index.html. And for now, I'm gonna create a HTML template like this. And also I have this font that I grabbed from Google Fonts that I'm gonna paste in here. It's called the uh, Rini Bini. I think you pronounce that like that. All right, so that's the font. And then as this is parcel down here in the body, we need to create a script tag with a source of, in this case, it's gonna be dot forward slash, and I'm gonna call it index.js. So we're not gonna use any JavaScript, but we have to have this file for parcel to work. Like this, do some auto formatting, save it. And I'm gonna create a new file that's called index.js and I can just console log out working in that one and save it. And I also want to create this start script here in the package.json file. So I create start. And to run parcel, we have to specify parcel and the file that we want to run and it's index.html like that. Save it and go back to the terminal npm start. You can see that it sets up the server here, localhost 1234. So I open that one up, nothing is showing of course, but we can check our console and see that it console log out working. So we know that the parcel bundler is working. We can also try it by creating some HTML. So inside here on the body, I can just type something like that, save it, go back to the browser and you can see that it auto updated it, so that's sweet. That's why I want to use parcel. All right, so that's the setup. Let's move on to the HTML. Let's create the HTML for this project. So we're gonna be in the index.html file for this one. And down here in the body, we can remove this stuff here. And first I'm gonna have a wrapper div with an ID of app. That's gonna wrap everything. And then I have a div with a class of cassette. Like so. Then if we look at the finished cassette here, we're gonna have these screws. So we have five of them, but the first four, I'm gonna place them on top here. And I don't really think there's any special way you have to place them. I place them at the top here. It's just important to have them inside of the cassette class. So I create a div with a class of screw and a class of track. And of course, we're gonna create these classes in the next part. And we have screw dash dash TL, and that's for top left. We're gonna have a span, just an empty span like that. So that's one screw. Then I paste them in three more times. And I'm just gonna change this screw dash dash TL here, because this one is gonna be TR. And the third one is gonna be BL. 
So that's for top right and bottom left and bottom right. BR, like that. So that's the four screws. Then we're going to have the label on the cassette itself. So div class equals label, like that. And inside of that one, I'm going to have a div with a class label dash dash writing. And then it's going to say Vaben back to the 80s. And it's absolutely important that you type in Vaben back to the 80s, otherwise this one won't work. And of course, that's a lie. I'm just kidding. You can type in whatever you want and you probably don't want to use my name. So type in whatever you want. All right, that's the label. Save it. And you can see that it turns up here in our browser. So that's nice. Then we're going to have a div with a class of wheels wrapper. And this is the div here. If we look at the cassette, we have the wheels here because we created the label now. And then this is the label around here. The, and then we have the writing here on the label. And this one is the wrapper for the wheels. That's the black thing here. So go back to the code. We have our wheels wrapper. Then we're going to create the shadow for the, for the wheels. I'm going to have own classes for these ones because when we rotate the wheels here, as I do here, we don't want to rotate the shadow. So that's why. Because as you can see here, we have some shadow around here and I don't want to rotate that one also. So that's why I create uh, separate divs for the shadows. So div class equals wheel dash shadow. And now we have another class, wheel dash shadow dash left. Like that, and we can copy this one and paste it in below. And we're going to change this, this to shadow right because we have one left wheel and one right wheel. So that's the shadow for, for the wheels. Then we're going to have the wheels themselves. So we have a div with a class of wheel and wheel dash left. And then inside of that one, we're going to nest a few divs. So we have another div with a class of teeth wrapper. And the teeth wrapper, it's the wrapper that holds all these teeth here that's going to rotate. All right. And inside of the teeth wrapper, you probably guessed it, we're going to have the teeth div class equals tooth. Like that. And we're going to have four of them. So paste in three more. And you may wonder why are there only four of them? Because there's eight of them here. And that's because it is only four, but I'm going to create those nice little things here. And I'm going to show that later how to do that. Do some auto formatting. And I think we can just, yeah, we're going to have the window first between this one here and this, we have this window. So I'm going to create that one first. So go down two divs. And create another div with a class equals window. And then we have a nested div inside of that one that's called class equals tape dash left. And we can copy this one. And we change the other one to tape dash right. So that's our window. And then we can copy this one div class wheel and wheel left. Everything here, copy it. And paste it down below the window class. So we're going to change this to wheel right. And everything else is going to be the same. Then we go down three divs. So down below there. We're going to have a div with a class of bottom. And the bottom, I didn't find a better name for that one. That's the part here. That's going to be the bottom. Then we have a div with a class of holes. And then another div inside of that one that's called class hole. Then below that div, we have a class of hole dash square dash left. And that should be it for the holes. And then we need to create the last screw also. That's the one here in the middle. 
So I create the div with a class screw track screw screw dash dash bottom. And then inside of that one, I also have an empty span. Then we can copy these holes, paste it in below the screw class, and we're going to change this one to right and auto format it. And I think this should be it. Hopefully this will work, save it. There's nothing there now, but we will create the CSS now for this. And this is quite uh, confusing, I guess now, when just seeing this HTML, but this is just the structure, the bones of the stuff. And we're going to create the CSS now and style all these divs. And hopefully at the end, it will look like this nice cassette band here. All right, so let's create the styles for this one. And let's start by creating a new file in the same folder that's called CSS. No, that's called style.css. All right, so that's the style file. And also we have to import this one in the index.html. So up here somewhere, maybe below that link, we can create a new link with a rel of style sheet and type of text forward slash CSS. And we have an href of style.css. And we self close it like that. And let's go back to the style file itself. And the first thing we're going to do is set up some CSS variables. And we set them up on the root. So colon root dash dash bg color is going to be white dash dash cassette dash bg is going to be triple three dash dash cassette dash bg dash shadow. It's going to be an RGB of 41, 40, 40. And you may wonder why do I use RGB here? And there's no special reason for that. I probably just played around with these colors. So that's why I left that value. You could also have it as a hex value if you want to have that. Dash dash tape dash color. It's going to be an RGB 190, 54, and 54, like that. And then we have dash dash teeth color. It's going to be light gray. So I'm using three versions of creating colors here. And that's actually great because you can see that you can create colors in different ways in CSS. So I can type this uh, kind of standard colors in. And then I have this RGB value. And then I have the hex value. So there's many ways that you can create colors in CSS. And we have the last CSS variable. And that's going to be writing dash dash writing colon RGB 43, 43, and 170. So that's our CSS variables. All right. Then on the body, I'm going to center some stuff here. I want the tape to be in the middle. So display flex line items center and justify content. Thunder. You could also do this with grid, but I'm used to doing it with Flexbox, so that's why I use this way of centering stuff. We also need to set the height to 100 viewport height and the width to 100 viewport width, like that. And that will send us stuff. And then also I want to do some resetting here. So I have an asterisk, comma, asterisk, colon, colon, before, because I want to set this on the pseudo elements also. Asterisk, colon, colon, after. And I'm going to set the box sizing to border dash box. And that's it for the resetting. All right. So everything is working. You can see that this one is centered now, and that's great. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here, I think, so that we can see it when I have the code editor open. Something like that. Then I'm going to style the cassette itself, dot cassette. I set the position to relative. 
And that's because I'm going to have some absolute positionings later. And I can also say that, that this uh, CSS, uh, these styles that I'm creating here, is, it's going to be very pixel perfect. And that's because it's very hard to create a cassette like this and make it fully responsive. So it's going to be very, very individual values on the pixel values in this CSS. All right, I display this one as a flex also. Align the items. Sender and justify content. The sender. And you could create an own class of doing this stuff if you want to do that. If you don't want to type it in every time, this should say position, not position. Position. I'm going to set the width on my cassette to 500 pixels. The height is going to be 315 pixels. And these are, of course, values that I've tried out that I think look nice. I'm going to set the background color, background dash color. It's going to be, and I grab my CSS variable, that's the cassette dash BG, like that. Border dash radius is going to be 10 pixels. And I set the box shadow. I want some nice shadow just below the cassette so it will look more realistic. And I'm going to set it to 2 pixels, 2 pixels, and 5 pixels. And I use an RGBA value of 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.5. So that's black, but I have a transparency of 0 0.5 on it. That's the opacity, the last value here. I set the border dash top to 2 pixels, solid. And the color is going to be 555. I could also create a variable for this one, of course, if I want to do that. And I set the border dash bottom, two pixels, solid, black. And this one is going to give it this nice little 3D effect. Save it and see what we got. We have our cassette here. I'm going to zoom it out a bit, maybe. You can see we have this little shadow around it. And there's also, if we look real close, we have this nice little 3D effect here with the borders around. So that will make it kind of, yeah, look 3D. All right, back to the code. That's the cassette. That's the base of everything. Then I'm going to set an after and before because we want those nice little things here at the sides on the cassette. If we look at this one, you can see that we have them on the side here. So I'm going to create those ones now. So I have dot cassette, colon, colon, before. I set the content to empty. I set the width to 5 pixels. The height is going to be 100 pixels. The position is going to be absolute. And I set the left value, I position it to minus 10 pixels because it's going to be before the cassette itself. And I set the bottom to 30 pixels. I set the border dash right to five pixels solid. And I have the variable that's called cassette BG shadow. I have the border dash top. It's gonna be five pixels solid, transparent. Yeah, and the other ones is gonna be the same. So I just copy this one and change this one to border dash left. And this one is going to be border dash bottom. I auto format it and save it. And you can see that it showed up here now, and that's super great. Then we can copy this one because we're going to have almost an identical for the right side. And I change this one to after instead of before. And this one is going to be Instead of left, it's going to say right here. And this one is going to be border left instead of border right. And this one can be top, and this one is going to be right. Save it. And you can see that it shows up on the right side. And that's super sweet. So we have the basic shape of our cassette. Then I'm going to create the wheels wrapper, and that's the one here in the middle. So I name that one 
dot wheels dash wrapper. I set the position to relative. And when you set the position to relative, you, you usually do that because you want to use position absolute on a child div. So that's why otherwise it won't work. I set the width to 300 pixels. The height is going to be 80 pixels. The margin dash bottom is going to be 25 pixels. The background is going to be from the variables. We have dash dash cassette background. So we use the same color. The border dash radius is going to be 50 pixels. I display this one as a flex also, and I do the usual stuff, align items, center. It would probably be better to have its own class for this one. Justify content, center. So you don't have to repeat yourself if you have a special class just to center in this stuff. I'm going to set the set index on this one to one. I set the border to one pixels. Solid, transparent. I'm going to set the background. And here's uh, some tricky stuff here. And that's because I want the border to be gradient. So you have to do some tricky stuff here to, to make that work. And I actually found this one on the internet, but I don't remember where. Um, so it's kind of tricky, so I'm just going to type it in, and this will create a gradient border for our div. Linear dash gradient. We're going to go to right with that one. Then we have a comma, and we have the color, and I'm going to grab the cassette background again. And then we have another color, so var cassette background. So we have the same color twice. Please note here that I make a comma here. So that's very important. And I'm going to continue here now with a linear gradient again. Like that. I set it to zero degrees. I have a color of the cassette background again. And then I'm going to have a color of gray. Save it. And you can see that this one moved here. It, it doesn't work yet. It hasn't been created. There are some other stuff that we have to do also for this one. I'm going to set the background dash clip, padding dash box, comma, and border dash box. And I'm also going to set the background dash origin to padding dash box and border dash box. And I set the box shadow also on this one. That's going to be zero, two pixels, two pixels, and an RGBA value of zero, 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 and 0 0.2. And as you can see here now, we have this one showing up. So it created this gradient border here. So that's nice. As you can see here now, it doesn't look right because this one is to the left now of this, because and we want this label to be on top and this one in the middle. So, and that's because I'm going to absolute position this label. So I'm going to create the label now down below here. So dot label, I set the position to absolute. I set the width to 440 pixels. The height is going to be 186 pixels. And as I said before, this is very specific pixel width and height on this one. So it's very specific for this uh, project. I set the top to 30 pixels and the left is going to be 30 pixels also. I set the border dash. No, it should say left. Border dash radius to 10 pixels. I set the border to one pixel solid and I have a var of dash dash cassette background. Then I'm going to set the background image because I want this uh, cool label here with, with multiple colors, like this one here. I have three colors here. And this one actually I found somewhere on the internet. You have those gradient generators. If you Google, you can have those uh, create this gradient for you. So I'm actually just going to paste this one in. You can see that I have these gradients here. I need to have a see my colon there also. 
So I created this with a generator, and this one generated all this for me. I usually use those kind of tools to generate gradients. All right, then we need to set the background dash size to 450 pixels and 450 pixels again. Do some auto formatting, save it, and you can see that we have our label now. But the text doesn't look right, so we're going to fix that also. So just below here, dot label, colon, colon, after. And this is because I want to have this 3D effect again, so it looks like we have some shadows and some highlights. If we look, we can actually look at the cassette. We have the highlight here at the bottom, and we have some darker here at the top. So that's the one I'm going to create by using the pseudo element after. So position is going to be absolute again. I set top to minus three pixels. I set left to minus three pixels. I set the content to empty. I set the width to 444 pixels. The height is going to be 190 pixels. The background is going to be transparent. The border dash radius is going to be 0 0.7 EM. Border dash top is going to be the color of 555 solid and 0 0.1 EM. You could use REM also if you want to do that. And just as before, we should probably create a variable for this colors also. So that's the border top. We have the border dash bottom also. We're going to set that one to D5, D5, and D5. Solid 0 0.1 EM. Save it and see what we've got. Not labor, label. As you can see, we have this nice highlight here, so it looks more three-dimensional. Okay, we're going to fix the writing also before moving on. So dot label dash dash writing. I set the font family, and I'm going to set it to the one that I imported from Google Fonts, Rini, Beanie, and Cursive as the fallback font. I set the font dash size to 1.8 RAM. The color is going to be from the variable. I have this variable that's called writing. I display it as a flex. I set the flex direction to center, just as before, and align items to center. No, the flex direction should be column on this one. I changed the direction that way. And the justify content is going to be space dash between on this one. I set the margin to 0. Point Zero and auto. I set the width to 350 pixels and the height is going to be 50 pixels. The margin dash top is going to be 10 pixels and the border dash radius is going to be 10 pixels. I set the background to white and the padding is going to be 10 pixels, 20 pixels, 20 pixels, and 20 pixels auto format it and save it and there you have it. So that's the label with the text. A lot of CSS here now. Then I'm going to continue with the wheels. So I'm going to create these classes after the wheels wrapper up here. So we're going to have the wheel itself. So dot wheel position is relative on this one. I set the width to 60 pixels. And the height is going to be 60 pixels also because it's going to be a round circle. All right, so that's the wheel. Then we have dot wheel dash left. And for this one, we're going to create an animation. So animation, rotate, that's the name of the animation that I'm going to create. Three seconds, linear, and infinite. And we can copy this one and paste it in below and change it to wheel right. And this one is going to move a little bit slower. So we change this to four seconds. 
Then I create the animation itself. So at keyframes, rotate from, I'm going to rotate from transform, rotate zero degrees. And then I'm going to move, rotate it to, and I set the transform, rotate 360 degrees. All right, so that's the animation. That's everything you have to do to get it rotated, but we can't actually see the wheels yet. So we have to create the wheels also. So below here, and as I said, you can, could probably structure it in another way. And I'm doing all of this with vanilla CSS now, so you could use something like SAS and nest stuff inside of it, and you won't have to write this much CSS, but I always think it's a good practice to create stuff in vanilla CSS if you want to learn CSS. All right, then we have a class that's called wheel-shadow. I'm gonna position it to absolute. The background on this one is gonna be a linear gradient. And as you can see, there's no problem creating gradient backgrounds, but there is problem if you want to have a border that's gradient, so that's why I did that special stuff before. It's gonna be 180 degrees. RGBA is gonna be zero, 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 and one, that's black. And I set it to start on zero percent, and then it's gonna go to RGBA 255, 255, 255, 0 0.3, and that's white with opacity, of 0 0.3. I set that one to 100% like that. Shouldn't be a semicolon there. I remove that one. I'm gonna set the border dash radius on this one to 50%. The width is gonna be 64 pixels and the height is gonna be 64 pixels on this one. It's a little bit bigger than the wheel itself, because this one is going to be the border around the wheel, so, so to say, the shadow. I guess this is the wrong name now when I think about it. It's not a shadow, it's more like the 3D effect. So I set the set index to minus one on this one. Save it, and you can see that we have it here, but it's only showing in the middle. We want two of them. And that's why we have the dot wheel dash shadow dash left. I set the left position to seven pixels and the top seven pixels. And then we can copy this one, paste it in below and change it to wheel shadow right. And those values are gonna change. We're gonna have right here instead. Save it. And there you have it. You can see that this is gonna be the 3D effect when we put the wheels over here. You can see it here in the finished one. It's this one here. It's going to create this uh, nice little 3D effect for us. All right, so let's create the teeth that's going to rotate. So dot teeth dash wrapper. I set the width to 100%. I set the height to 100%. I display it as a flex, again, align items. I really should have created the own, a known class for this one. Justify content is gonna be center and the border is gonna be five pixels solid. And we have the color here that's called teeth color. I set the border dash radius to 50% because this is gonna be circle. And I set the background on this one, BG color. Save it. And that's our teeth wrappers. These, these ones are going to be placed here when we create the window in the middle, because this one is a flex. So it's going to push these ones out to the side when we create the window in the middle. So I'm going to create the teeth and then I'm going to create the window. I'm going to have a before pseudo element on the teeth wrapper, so teeth dash wrapper, colon, colon, before. 
I position it to absolute. I set the top to zero and the left to zero. The content is going to be empty. And this is because I want some nice little shadow effect inside of here so that it looks more realistic. And this one I set the background to radial gradient, radial dash gradient. It's going to be a circle and the RGBA is going to be 255, 255, 255, and 0.1 and 55% coma. And the last value is going to be RGBA, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.5 and 80% on that one. Then I maybe do should do some auto formatting. There's something wrong here. Yeah, that's because it shouldn't be a comma, it should be a semicolon. All right, then I set the border dash radius to 50%. This one is also going to be a circle. I set the width to 100%. The height is going to be 100%. And the set index is going to be 10 because I want this placed on top. So as you can see, it created this little shadow here now. So that it will look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so that's the teeth wrapper. Then we have to create the tooth. The, we have these two individual teeth that I call tooth. So dot tooth position is going to be absolute. The width is going to be 90%, and the height is going to be 9 pixels. And I set the box shadow on this one, and this is the trick. It's going to create two teeth on each tooth div. So I'm going to show you this. I just want to type this out first. So I set it to inset because it's going to be an inline box shadow. Instead of creating the box shadow on the outside, we're going to create it on the inside. So that's why I use inset. And then I grab the teeth color. I set it to nine pixels, zero, zero, zero. And then I have a comma and create another one. Inset var dash dash teeth color. And this one is going to be minus nine pixel because it's on the other side, zero, zero, zero. And see my colon. Auto format it and save it. And you can see that we have this one tooth here now that is rotating. And I think it will be a little bit more clear if I create the background here red to show you that this is the div. So I'm setting this box shadow on each side of this div and the background is going to be transparent. So that is why it's two teeth on each div here. And they're rotating nice. So that's also sweet. Then, because we have in our HTML, we have created four of these divs, so we can grab those ones and rotate them so that we create eight of them. So dot tooth, then I'm going to grab the nth dash of dash type, and the second one, transform this one, rotate, I rotate it 45 degrees, save it. And you can see that it adds in another one. They just stacked on top of each other, but when we rotate them, we can see them. And we have to do two more of these ones. So copy this one. We're going to change the nth of type to three on this one. And this one is going to be rotated minus 45 degrees. And this one is going to be changed to four. And we rotate it, this one 90 degrees. And hopefully this will work. Yeah, there you have it. Whoops. They're rotating nicely, but we have to create a window also. Otherwise it won't look right. So we have our class of window. Position is going to be relative. I set the width to 130 pixels. The height to 60 pixels, 
the background is going to be from the variables, the BG color, like that. I set the border dash radius, the 10 pixels, the margin is going to be 0 and 15 pixels. I set the overflow to hidden, and this is important because we're going to have those cassette tapes in the middle here, as you can see here. And if we don't set the overflow to hidden, they will show the whole circle here. We don't want to, the div to expand, so that's why we set the overflow to hidden. I set the border to 1.5 pixels in this case, solid, transparent. I set the border dash radius to 8 pixels. I'll change back to this one also so that we can see the cassette. And I'm going to set the background. I'm going to do the same stuff here to have a gradient uh, border around this one. So I'm going to set the background to linear gradient to the right. It's going to be white and white. Coma. I have another linear gradient, zero degrees, gray and black, semicolon. Then I'm going to set the background dash clip, the padding dash box, and the border dash box, the background dash origin. It's going to be padding dash box and the border dash box. And I think actually, I can't actually explain those ones because I'm not using those that often. So I, I, I Google this one to figure this one out. So that's why I can create this nice gradient border. If you want to know more about background origin and background clip and how you create this border, I think actually, I don't like to say it, but I think you have to Google it yourself if you want more detail on how it works. All right. All right. So then I have a box shadow on this one also. It's going to be inset. One pixel, that means that it's on the inside, as I told you before. Two pixels and one pixel. And I set the RGBA value on this one to 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.3. And you can imagine how much tweaking there is to this one. That's why I didn't have time to go through all the code and optimize it, because it took some real time to create this cassette, actually, and tweak all the values. Save it. You can see that we have the window here, but we don't have this, the, the tape. So we're going to create those ones also. But first, I want to create the pseudo class on the window also of before. Window, colon, colon, before. Of course, I'm going to have a dot here also, because it's a class. I set the position to absolute, the width is going to be 100%, the height is going to be 10 pixels, and the background is going to be RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0 0.3. The content is going to be set to empty, and the set index is going to be set to 1. Save it. And you can see that it creates, it creates this nice little shadow effect that won't look great now. But if we look at the finished one, you can see that it looks pretty neat here. It will look great when we get those tapes in there also. Let's create the tapes. So dot window, that's the class, space, dot tape, dash left. That's how we're going to grab this, that class. So it's on window and tape left. I set the position to absolute. The top is going to be minus 58%. Left is going to be minus, minus 75%. The width is going to be 120 pixels. And the height is going to be 120 pixels also. I set the border dash radius. 50% because it's a circle. I set the box shadow on this one to 1 pixel, 0 pixel, and 5 pixels, and RGBA 
and I have this one here, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.5. And as you can imagine, box shadow is used a lot when you want to create those subtle little shadows and stuff to make it look real. Then I'm going to set the background image, background dash image. And this one I also found on the internet, because if we look at the finished cassette, you can see that I have those nice little lines here. So I created this one in a tool that will auto-generate this for me. So I'm actually just going to paste this one in also. Like this, you can see that, that it's using repeating dash radial dash gradient, and then you specify it to be a circle. And then you have your colors here, the tape colors, and set some pixels here. And then you have the other brown color here. That, that should be those lines. So that's the one that it creates here. And you can see that it show up here. And now we can actually take this one and copy it and paste it below. And change this one to tape right. And top is going to be minus 95% on this one, and the left is going to be minus 85%. And the width is going to be 160 pixels on both width and height, because this one is going to be a little bit larger. And the box shadow is going to be minus one pixel on this one, because it's on the other side. Save it. And of course this shouldn't be, and you can see it created it here, this one shouldn't be left, it should be right. So change that one to right, and there you have it. It looks sweet. I love it. I love those cassettes. Okay, so then we have the bottom and the screws left to create. So let's start with the screws. The dot screw position is going to be absolute. The width is going to be 15 pixels on this on these screws, and the height is also going to be 15 pixels because it's circular. I set the background to a gradient, linear gradient, 180 degrees rotation, and RGBA 0, 0, 0, and 1. That's going to be black. And I start on 0%. I have a comma and RG. BA 255255255 and that's white with an opacity of 3 and I go to 100% on that one. All right, then we have a semicolon just after the parenthesis. I display it as a flex. The line items is going to be center. Justify content is going to be center. And then to get this screw effect here, to get this effect here on the screws, I'm going to create different borders to actually make the shape of the screw. So the border dash left is going to be, and here I have just uh, colors that I haven't specified in variables either. So 5E, 5F, 5A, solid, 0 0.42 REM. Border dash bottom is going to be the same color as this one, so I can paste this one in. It's going to be solid and 0 0.35 REM. So, one thing that I should do to optimize this is to not use all these kind of different units. I'm using REM and EM and uh, pixel size and stuff like that, so I should unify those ones to one unit. So, I should change it to just use one unit. So, there you have one opportunity for optimization. All right, border dash top is going to be C3, C4, C1. Solid. 0 0.4 EM. So you can see this, the EM here. I actually think I found this one on the internet when I looked up the best way of doing stuff like this. So this could be the code that I've been using here. I'm not sure. So we can copy this one and paste it in below and change it to border right. It's going to be the same color, but yeah, it's going to have all the same values here. All right. Then I set the border dash radius to 50% because it's round. 
And I set the box shadow on this one also. It's going to be white, one pixel, zero point, minus zero point two pixels, one pixels, and zero. And I'm going to transform and rotate it minus 50 degrees. Save it and see, you can see this little one here that it shows up. So it's working, but we have to create some more stuff for this one to work. I need to have an after on this one also. So dot screw colon colon after. I set the position to absolute. The top to minus 10 pixels. The left is going to be minus 9 pixels. I display it as a block. The content is going to be empty. The width is going to be 21 pixels. The height is also going to be 21 pixels. I set the border dash radius to 50%. And I set the background to a linear gradient of minus 140 degrees, comma, and I have the colors RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.1, 0%. It starts at 0%, and then it goes to 255, 255, 255, 0.3, and 100%. And here I use RGBA because I want to be able to set the opacity. Shouldn't be a semicolon, it should be there instead. And I need to set the set index of minus one on this one. Save it. And this one is a typo, so it should say screw. And there you have it. We have this little subtle effect here to make it look like it. Yeah, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, you get it. And then inside of screw div, we have the span. So screw, span, display as a block. Width is going to be 0 0.45 EM. And the height is going to be 0 0.2 EM, the border dash radius. It's going to be 0 0.1 EM. Background is going to be 222. Save it. And as you can see, it, it's starting to take shape here in the middle, this little one here. It's creating these tracks in the screw here. Then I also have on screw span, I have colon, colon, and after. Display it as a block. The content is going to be empty. To be honest, this one is starting to get really boring now. And this is the thing when you have a lot of CSS, it's not that fun to teach actually because you're repeating all this stuff. I may stress this a little bit now because I'm not talking too much about it because it will be a much, much too long tutorial. So that's the trouble with teaching CSS, I think, at least for me. So 0 0.45 EM, and I really hate that I have different units here. This one should be semicolon. It's very easy to do some typo also in CSS. Height is going to be 0 0.2 EM, and the border radius is going to be 0 0.1 EM, and the background is going to be 222 on this one. And then I transform it, rotate 90 degrees. So I'm not sure if this works in all the browsers because I'm not doing any WebKit stuff and, and polyfills for those ones. Save it. And here you have it. It looks kind of like a screw. Maybe there is a place for optimization on this one also. I'm going to also transform all of these ones and give them some different rotation. So dot screw and dot screw dash dash tl span. Transform, rotate, 
minus 20 degrees. They are all placed on top of each other now, but I'm going to change that also soon. Just copy this one first and paste it in three more times. And I'm going to change the name here. This one is going to be TR and it's going to be rotated 10 degrees. And this one is going to be BL and it's going to be rotated minus 5 degrees. And the last one here is going to be BR and it's going to be rotated 35 degrees. All right, then we're going to position the screws themselves. So dot screw dash dash TL, that's the top left one. It's going to be top eight pixels and left eight pixels. Save it and you can see it's at the top now. So we can copy this one. And this one is going to be the TR and it's going to be top eight pixels. And instead of left, we change this one to right. And this one is going to be the BL. And this is the bottom instead of top. And left is going to be 8 pixels. And this is BR. And the bottom is going to be 8 pixels here. And this one is going to be right instead. Like that. Save it. And there you have it. That's the four screws. And this one that's showing here, that's the one that's going to be placed in the middle here on, the, on uh, the bottom here. So that's the only thing we have left. We're going to create the bottom part here and this, then this tape is finished. And as I said, this one is getting uh, real long now. So I'm actually happy that it's finished soon. It's not much dynamic in this tutorial. So we have the class of bottom. The width on that one is going to be 335 pixels. The height is going to be 75 pixels. The position is going to be absolute. The bottom, we set it to zero. The left is 80 pixels. The background is going to be a linear gradient. Minus 20 degrees and the color RGBA going to be 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.1, and 30%, comma, and RGBA, 255, 255, 255, and 0.6, and 100%, and a semicolon there, save it. And you can see that it doesn't look right now because we have to have this kind of borders here that have some slope on it. And we can create this, this one with a clip dash path. Set it to polygon. 5% 0, comma. 95% 0, comma. 100% and 100%. Comma, zero, and 100%. We're drawing a polygon here, starting on different directions and drawing it with all four corners here where the X and Y coordinates should be. So these are the X and Y coordinates we're drawing here. The Z index is going to be, I set it to 10,000 because I want it on top. I display, flex, align items. It's going to be flex end on this one. Justify content is going to be space between. And the padding is going to be 10 pixels and 40 pixels on this one. Save it. Go back. And you can see that we created this shape here. And this is just the background, actually, because you can see it's the one that you see here around this one that we created. So we're going to place another one on top now. And I'm going to do that with a pseudo element of after. So dot bottom, colon, colon, after. Content is going to be set to empty. The width is going to be 332 pixels. The height is going to be 80 pixels. 
the position is going to be absolute. Bottom is zero. Left is two pixels. Top is two pixels. And the background is going to be a linear gradient again. Two bottom. We have the color and we have the cassette background for this one. Then we have a coma and white. To a thousand percent. I don't think that's correct. I think it should be a hundred percent. And then we have the cassette BG color again. I set the set index to minus one on this one. Then we have to set a clip path on this one because we want the same shape as we did uh, before. So background size, first we set to 100% and three pixels. And then we have the clip dash path. We set that one to the polygon again. 5%, zero. 95%, zero. 100%. And 100% and 0 and 100%. Save it. And should it be 1000%? Yeah, it actually should. Okay. Probably should do it some other way, but it works. It isn't working at the edges, so I have to look this one up. Yeah, and first, this one shouldn't be 0 0.1, it should be 1. So one on that one. Yeah, and there shouldn't be a coma on this one. So remove that one and save it. And there you have it. It looks right now. Then we have the holes. So dot holes. Display flex. Align items. Let's end on this one. I set the set index to zero. So that's the main class for the holes. Then we have dot hole. The width is going to be 18 pixels. The height is also 18 pixels. The border dash radius is 50%. The background is from the variable BG color. I set the box dash shadow on this one. It's going to be an inset shadow, one pixel, one pixel, one pixel, RDBA, zero, zero, uh, it should be zero, 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 and 0 0.7. Okay, so there we have the holes. Then I have the after pseudo class on this one also. Content is set to nothing. The background is going to be a linear gradient, 180 degrees. RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0 0.1, no, 1 and 0 percent, comma, RGBA. 255, 255, 255, and 0 0.3 to 100%. I set the border dash radius to 50%. The width is going to be 22 pixels, and the height is going to be 22 pixels. The set index is set to minus 1. The margin dash left is going to be minus two pixels, and the margin dash top is going to be minus two pixels. And I set the position to absolute. And as you can see, we have this nice little effect here now on the hole that makes it look more realistic. Okay, just a few things left to do, and that's the square hole first, dot hole dash square, 
width 15 pixels, height 14 pixels, border radius is going to be 2 pixels, and the background is going to be white. And the box shadow on this one is going to be an inset shadow, 1 pixel, 1 pixel, 1 pixel RGBA. Zero, 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 and zero point seven. So you can see that it's two squares. They should be here, not in the middle. I may say that it should be in the middle. It should be here at the sides. That's the one I'm creating now. So. I have a pseudo element on this one also, whole dash square, colon colon after content set to nothing, background, yet again a linear gradient, 180 degrees RGBA, 0. 0, 0, and 0, no, and 1, 0%, RDBA, 255, 255, 255, 0 0.3, and 100%, and this one shouldn't be there, it should be a coma, we should have the semicolon there instead. I set the border dash radius to 4 pixels. And the width 19 pixels. The height is also going to be 19 pixels. The set index is going to be minus 1. The margin dash left is going to be minus 2 pixels. The margin dash top is going to be minus 3 pixels. And position is absolute on this one. Square typo there. Save it. And then we're going to have whole dash square dot left. And set the margin on that one, 0, 0, 10 pixels and 30 pixels. And then we can copy this one and change it to square right. And it's going to be 30 pixels and 10 pixels. No. This one is actually going to be 0, 30 pixels, 10 pixels, and 0. Auto format it and save it. And there is some trouble here with some div. I probably made a typo somewhere because it shouldn't look like this. I think there may be some structural thing with the HTML. I have to check this one out. And yeah, this one should be moved up above the hole. It's very important. Move this one up. Save it. Then there's only something fishy with this screw here, because it should be in the middle. Yeah, I haven't even created that one, so I can do that here at the bottom, maybe. Or maybe where the screws are. Yeah, somewhere here. Dot screw dash dash bottom position. It's going to be relative and transform rotate minus 50 degrees. And I also scale it because it should be a little bit smaller 0 0.8. Margin bottom is going to be 30 pixels, and hopefully, this will work. I save it, and there you have it. It's in the middle, and we're roughly at 500 rows of code for this one. It was kind of messy, maybe, because as I said, there are places for a lot of optimization. And if you want, if you like this one, you can just put a link in the comments below to show if you have optim optimized this and made it much, much better than my code. Hopefully this gave you some idea, at least, on how, on how to do kind of a photorealistic thing like this with only CSS. So I hope you enjoyed this one, even if it was a little bit long and repetitive, I know it was. 
I don't do this kind of tutorials that often. And to be honest, this was the first one. Uh, I don't really know if I should do them anymore. But anyways, if you like my stuff in my channel, please support me by subscribing and see you in another one.